Welcome to our Lent Online. It is good to be with you this day, Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. Today's focus is on letting go and letting God, and it has to do with our finances, our silver and our gold, as the hymn says, and what motivates our response to God's amazing grace poured out for all of us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're here today to gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 103 reminds us, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love for us towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, it is impossible for us to let go and let God with some of the things that we have in our lives that we want to hold on to. So give us, Lord, grant us that extra measure of your Holy Spirit that by faith we can place those things in your hands and trust in you and your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 12. St. Paul writes some wonderful words here as he talks about what motivates us in our giving toward God and toward one another. Beginning with verse six. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work, as it is written. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seeds to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way, to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but it is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit. Amen. With our Lenten theme of Let Go and Let God, we've been focusing on that hymn, Take My Life That I May Be. And so far we have covered several of those aspects of our lives that we turn over to God and give to God to honor God. Today's verse is very specific as it focuses on our financial resources and how you and I can honor God by using those resources for God's glory and God's honor. It was Martin Luther, the father of the Lutheran Church, who said that three conversions are necessary. The conversion of the head, the conversion of the heart, and the conversion of the pocketbook. And he said, the most difficult of those three is the conversion of the pocketbook. I'm reminded of an old illustration about a chicken and a pig. The Reverend Dr. Tony Evans put a nice little twist on this old parable. And so he said it like this. A chicken and a pig were walking down the street one day and they stopped outside of a grocery store with a sign in the window that read, bacon and eggs desperately needed. The chicken looked at the pig, and the pig looked at the chicken, and the chicken said, let's go help the grocer. 
I'll give him the eggs and you give him the bacon. The pig says, you're crazy. And the chicken said, what's the problem? The pig said, it's real simple. For you, it's a contribution. For me, it's the whole thing. And he went on to say that most of us don't mind giving God an egg here or an egg there, there an egg, here an egg, everywhere an egg, egg, right? Most of us don't mind giving God a little something because you can just lay an egg and walk away. But God wants, he said, God wants chitlins and pork chops and ham hocks. He wants the whole pig. And to give God bacon, you can't do that without giving up you. And we are afraid, like the pig, if we give God the bacon, there'll be nothing left. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 that we read just a minute ago here, St. Paul speaks about our motivation behind our giving. Not reluctantly or, or under compulsion, he says, for God loves a cheerful giver. I believe to understand what's behind that kind of motivation is first to understand the depth and the fullness of God's generosity toward us. It starts from the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. And then God populated the earth with all sorts of, of animals and creatures. And lastly, God placed upon this earth, his creation, his crown of creation. That is you and I, as people of God, created in the image and the likeness of God. We're a vital part of God's creation. God loves us more than we can ever begin to know. That doesn't mean that we have a full reign or right to do whatever we darn well please although some people believe that that's true. No, God created us to be good stewards of his gifts, of all that he has given us. And yes, there are times that God is disappointed in us when we don't obey his commands, when we turn away from him or reject or misuse the gifts that God has given to us. And certainly when we make those gifts the most important treasures in our lives, and let our passion and desire for the things that God has made uh, rule us instead of God himself. And yet, in spite of all of that, the Apostle John reminds us of God's promise of salvation in words that are very familiar to us. John 3.16, he writes, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus is like that pig in the story. He was all in for us. He paid the ransom for our sins. He paid with his life. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. And why? because of his love, because of the Father's love for us. Again, a love so great that we can't even begin to comprehend the depth and the height and the breadth of that love. And even though that you and I are still sinful human beings, God doesn't want to destroy us. No, he wants to offer us that hope and that promise of eternal life. And all that God asks us to do is to simply believe to believe in the power of that sacrifice that Jesus made for us, to believe in the victory that Jesus has won when he rose again from the dead, conquering sin, death, and the devil. He wants us to believe that Jesus has fully pardoned our sins so that we are worthy once again to stand in the presence of God, surrounded by his love and his mercy and his grace. That's the depth of God's generosity toward us. And there's nothing that you and I can do whatsoever to repay that generosity because that's how grace works. Grace is a free gift given with the utmost love and care and concern put in place for those who receive it. 
Well, that's God's generosity toward us. Let's talk about our generosity, or we might say our response to God's generosity toward us and the motivation that should be behind our giving back to God. St. Paul says it in our text today, God loves a cheerful giver. And what that means is that we honor God by following the example that God has set for us out of his great generosity, giving us everything we have, life, death, and resurrection, all through the sacrificial blood of his, again, only begotten son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, on that cross as he died for each and every one of us. St. Paul's quick to point out that our giving of our silver and gold should never be done reluctantly or with under compulsion. I mean, no one wants to be forced to give. That's just the wrong motiva motivation. I mean, it's bad enough, right? Taxes being taken out of our hard-earned salaries, especially when we discover the lack of good stewardship that our government employs when it decides where and when to use those resources, those hard-earned tax dollars. And yet Jesus reminds us in Matthew 22, verse, 20, verse 21, to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and unto God what is God's. Back when I was serving in my first parish, it was a two-point parish down in South Texas, down by Quero, West Off and Linden Allen, if you don't know where it's at, just look at it on the map, look at it on the map, Highway 87, just, just northwest of Quero. Well, the two Lutheran churches there, St. John's, each of them, it was, it was about my second year in the ministry, and I was still as green as a John Deere tractor. I had a funeral one afternoon, and after the funeral, there was a man waiting patiently to speak to me. And he kind of waited until everybody had left. The ladies were still there cleaning up from the funeral meal following the funeral. But he wanted to, he wanted to, to have a word with me. In fact, I didn't know this man. Uh, he was a relative of the person that I had buried. And he said, when he got the chance and took me to the side, Pastor, I need to confess to you something. Get it off my chest. Okay, sure, you know, I'm willing and ready to do that. What you got, brother? Offer you that word of forgiveness and hope. Well, first of all, he admitted he was a Baptist. Now, that's not what he was confessing, though, you know, as a good Lutheran, I, I, I could have taken that. No, he said, Pastor, I give my tithe regularly and freely in thanksgiving for what God has done for me. And I am so honored and glad to do that. But he admitted, I'm having trouble in giving my offerings and gifts above the tithe. Now, while he's confessing this to me, my mind is racing 100 miles an hour thinking, I need this good Baptist to talk to my, my Lutherans about the importance of tithing. I don't want to let this guy go. I mean, let's face it, Lutherans in general don't have the best record when it comes to the tithe. The Baptists have got the corner on that market, no doubt. And with the right motivations in place, for the most part. I'm so glad that we here at the Holy Ghost have had a few of those Baptists join us along the way to help us and our motivation toward the tithe. But I found it refreshing. This man came to me because he was struggling with giving a bob and beyond that tithe to make that confession, that confession that he gladly wanted to give more, but, but right now it was a struggle for him. And his motivation, again, was done, I, I fully believe, with a cheerful and thankful heart. And that struggle was, was wanting to go more, was wanting to go the extra mile, and wanting that to also be from the depth of his heart as well. You know, I believe that no one should ever be compelled or forced or strong-armed into giving, especially if that person is down on their luck, struggling to make ends meet, trying to put food on the table and clothes on their backs. It's in those times that the church is there for you. 
to give a hand up, not a hand out, but a hand up to help you get back on your feet and back to a good place. Our generosity should always be a matter of the heart and a grateful response again for all that God has done and continues to do for each and every one of us. Our generosity in sharing our silver and gold it's not all just about the church either. It's about helping one another, especially in times of need. And God will always, always present us with opportunities for doing good in those particular ways. There will always be a need and a chance for us to respond. Verse 12 in our text today speaks about this when Paul says, this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but it's also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. It's those many expressions of thanks to God that goes out into the community and out into the world beyond the four walls of the church. And this is where the church and we as fellow Christians get a chance to shine. Again, not for our own glory, but to give glory and honor to God. I want to commend you, though. During this past few weeks, as we face Snowbid 21, the winter storm of the century, you came out of the woodworks to call and check on your neighbors to make sure that they were okay. Some of you brought them into your homes where you had heat and light and warmth and where you broke bread together. Some of you helped get supplies to people who were without and couldn't get to town. Some of you helped check on your neighbor's livestock to make sure they, they survived and had water and feed during that time. Generosity abounded. Praise be to God. You responded to the needs that were there. Amen to that. You went the extra mile. You went beyond the tide. Thank you. And thanks be to God for your generosity. It will not be forgotten. But back to the chicken and the pig. You know, it's more than us just dropping an egg here or there and then clucking proudly because we have laid that egg. God inspires us to give ourselves and our treasures to him and model that sacrificial giving that Christ modeled for each and every one of us, giving us willingly, freely, and joyfully that gift of forgiveness and eternal life. Again, a gift we can never repay, but a gift that motivates us to keep on giving because of his love for us, a love that we should share with one another. I'm reminded of that model from our now dear departed Pastor Emeritus, Pastor Arnold Schleter, and by Helen, his wife, and the motivation that they lived with in their financial giving. He said more than once over the years, they lived by what they call the 10-10-80 the rule. They gave 10% in tithe to the church, they saved 10%, and they lived off the other 80% of their income. And for them, God became First priority, the first off the top of their paycheck went to God and the church and God's work in the world. Then they went or took the other 10% to put it in savings for the future because we never know what the future may hold. To so have that in reserve just in case. And then they chose to intentionally, intentionally then live off the 80%. Not always easy, but it took some motivation to be able to do that. But their priorities, again, were God first, their, their savings, and then living off of what they had. And you and I both know they were generous beyond just the tithe to the church and to those who were in need. And so what a great model of stewardship that is for us. As we think about our motivation today for giving of our finances, our silver and our gold, and what God has entrusted to each and every one of us. 
And so we thank you. We thank you for your tithes and your gifts and your offerings that are given above and beyond. And remind folks that those are still necessary needs that are out there in our community today as we, you know, still need those funds to operate and to share this good news. So you can continue to drop those by in person at worship or uh, bring them by the church office. There's a drop slot at the side door, mail them in or go to set up an online type of giving. We appreciate those gifts and those tithes and those offerings for the special needs that we lift up to you each and every month. We pray again, that you will be motivated by God's tremendous gift of his son, Jesus Christ, and the hope and the promise that we live with of everlasting life. For God loves one who gives cheerfully and joyfully in service to him. Amen. I invite us now into a time of prayer. Lord God Almighty, you remind us that where our treasure is, there our hearts will also be. And while it's easy for us to think of treasures as our income and finances and the things that we own, may we, O oh Lord, with your help and guidance, not let those things consume our every passion and desire. Help our hearts to be focused solely on you and the precious gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ so that our hearts might be filled with grace, mercy, and forgiveness, and thanksgiving for all that you have done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we lift up in prayer before you today those who are hospitalized, especially Ray Hildebrandt, Jane Krenwelge, and Alan Scholian. Strengthen them and their families in their times of need. Lord, be also with those who mourn the loss of loved ones, for the family of Dorothy Carr, whose service was held yesterday in Brownwood, and for Eric Wentz's family, whose memorial service will be held on Sunday afternoon. Surround them with that promise and that hope of the good news of the resurrection. And Lord, continue to be with others who are sick or ill, and surround them with your healing and your hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Precious Savior, as you gave your all for us by dying and rising again, so that we might have that promise and hope of eternal life, so may we also follow your example and be motivated to share our tithes and gifts and offerings. Again, motivated by your love and your sacrifice, that we may give cheerfully and not reluctantly, that you may be honored and glorified as we serve your people in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us your grace and peace throughout the rest of this week, guiding us in our struggles, bringing peace to the storms that we face, physically, emotionally, or spiritually, and lifting us up with your almighty arms so that we are bathed and surrounded by that peace of God which passes all our human understandings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, good Lord, guide us as we pray that prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we depart, just a few quick announcements today. First of all, this coming weekend, March 14th, we will be having Holy Communion served in all services. So if you're in person, 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m., we'll have communion here as well as also celebrating the Lord's Supper on our Facebook and YouTube services and the radio. So I invite you to have your elements, the bread and the wine ready. 
If you need a communion packet, please come by the church office and pick one up before Friday. Uh, the church office is 830-997-2288. A reminder that our midweek Lipton offerings, one half of our midweek offerings will go toward the Grace Center, the place that's a shelter for abused women. So please think and pray about that and your special giving there. The other special offering to give this month of March is for our needs fund that is primarily for Holy Ghost members who are experiencing or in need of emergency funds to get them over the hump. These funds have been used quite a bit during the recent storms for people's recovery and just getting them back on their feet. And so we invite folks to prayerfully consider replenishing those funds to help where others may be in need in the future. Easter's coming up about three and a half weeks away. We are going to ask for RSVPs for our Easter services. There will be four of them. Again, we are still uh, with our COVID precautions, wearing the face mask, social distancing and worship, so our numbers will be limited. So again, we appreciate and thank you for your cooperation and, and doing the RSVPs like we did for Christmas Eve. We know that that will go well. We will have services on Easter Saturday, Easter April 3rd. And so we'll start our Saturday night service back. That's at 6 p.m. And then Sunday morning, we have a sunrise at 7 a.m. That service will be outside between the fellowship hall and the church. And yes, you will need to RSVP for that service as well, just so that we have a count for that service. And then for our 8 and 10.30 a.m., Easter, Sun Easter Sunday services, which will be here in the worship space as well. So please, RSVP, there will be opportunity for those to be online as well. And we'll provide another uh, time for you to pick up elements for Easter if you'd like to do that. And we'll not be attending services in person. Reminder for Easter Saturday, there will be an Easter egg hunt. Daniel has the, the young families and those children uh, all geared up for that. He's asking for donations of candy that's already bagged. Uh, no eggs or anything this year. So just please, if you have uh, a passion to get those things, uh, provide those things, please drop them by the church office as well. I believe that's all in the way of announcements. And just want to invite you and bless you uh, and ask God's strength to be with you for the rest of this week. Amen.